And after a long and grueling process of getting this guy out of this type of packaging, uh, the lower torso was in here, the rest of the body was in here, uh, it was all tied together with twist ties, and uh, the actual plastic trays was attached to this nice little full foil background. So yeah, it was a very fun, fun day, you know, to get that guy out. Well, actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. There was only about mm, about four twist, five twist ties: waist, arms, ankles. It's not like today where it's like two in the, two for each arm, two for each leg, one for each one for the torso, and one for the neck. Because God knows we want the neck secured. Okay, enough ranting about that. Let's get on with the actual figure itself. Looking at this and playing with it for a while and going through about mm, four or five takes on this particular review, I am just blown away each time by the look of this guy. This is classic Batman. When you think of Batman, especially for those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s, when you think of Batman, you see this. When, when you close your eyes and you think of Batman, you see this. This is the classic Neil Adams look for Batman. First introduced in the late 60s, 68, 69, I believe. And lasted up until the Nightfall. Uh, the Nightfall storyline. The Nightfall saga. Where Bane breaks Batman's back. And when he comes back, he wears this look for a little bit. And then he decides to go all dark and brooding because fans were upset that Batman was getting a little bit more comical or that he was just silly looking in the baby blues but whatever it was an iconic look Neil Adams was a arts genius ah, whatever so let's start off with the articulation he stands about six inches tall uh, he's got some very nice uh, ball jointed shoulders. They do go all the way around, but the little rubber cowl cape uh, does get in the way, so articulation is kind of limited. It goes, you know, complete 360 around, like I said. And of course, he does have some nice little swivel uh, forearms. No bendable elbows, though. That's, uh, that's a little disappointing. But they basically did reuse the sculpt for uh, the zipline attack Batman, I think is what it was called. Uh, the articulation for his legs, he does have the typical uh, waist that just goes forward. Doesn't go back. Doesn't go back. If I did, I'm going to break him. And if I broke him, I would be very, very sad. And you would see this reviewer literally cry on camera. And he does have the knees that bend. That's pretty much it, other than the head. The head does go around. No ball jointed head, it's just swivels. And he does have the waist. And that is it. That's all you get for articulation. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points of articulation. Two, four, six, eight, nine. No, ten points of articulation. Uh, Transato 10, you can't count today. What I really do love mostly about this figure is just look at the paint job. He's in your standard gray bodysuit with baby blues in the cowl, gloves, underoos, boots, and of course the cape. We'll get to the cape a little later. But what really stands this figure out from, let's say, the standard, typical release that Mattel did in 2003... Uh-oh, I'm starting to lose light a little bit. So, what really stands him out from the other figures of this particular era are the wash. They gave him a very nice wash um, to pretty much give excellent detail to make the muscular appendages very pop very nicely. It's kind of overdone in some areas, like it looks like it was sprayed a little messy right here on the uh, some of the arms, some places on the arms, but right here in the chest where it's 
sprayed around the rib cage and the abdomen and especially around his pecs. It looks very nice. It it look, gives the figure a very nice detailed shadowing. Definitely something that you would have seen in a comic book in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He even has it in his boots, especially the folds of the costume. His legs, and of course, even in the back. The back's going to be covered mostly by a cape, but yeah, we're going to give it in the back as well. Even the scallops and the gloves even have that little detail in them. And the open, each individual finger as well has it as long as the gloves that really gives it a very nice comic book shadowy look all around the uh, the cape as well and as you can notice even the ears even the bat ears has like that very washy shadowy now they could have done this two ways one way would be to just completely spray it and just look like a complete mess but they really took their time it looks like with each figure and the results is satisfying. It is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Words cannot really express. Except I said beautiful a whole bunch of times. So we're just going to go with beautiful. He does have the classic utility belt with the uh, snap buckle and the each cartridge. Um, I forget, each capsule, each cartridge, this is normally, in the olden days, each little capsule had each of his accessories, gadgets, like a miniaturized camera, tweezers, and miniature flashlight, and whatever he would use. But then as the comic books went on, it would, the capsules had like foods, you know, food sources, uh, antidotes, uh, and uh, these little, uh, the little spaces in between the belts actually became the uh, storage compartments for his various gadgets. Because after all, when you have something like a grapnel launcher, you're not really going to fit it right in here. So, you know, writers had to take liberties in explaining how some of his gadgets would fit in his belt. Okay, now moving on to the cape. The cape is very nice. It's got a very nice shiny uh, very nice shiny baby blue thread on the outside and on the inside it's nice and black very shiny but also a little flat that way it doesn't distract too much from the figure's appearance it could distract all you want from here because after all when you're looking at the back of the figure you have to look at something shiny something's got to really be interesting but when you're looking through here you really got to focus more on the sculpt and the paint and basically the overall character of the figure so they went with a slightly, so they went with a nice little black. Because obviously if they went with a blue and it was shiny, it would distract, like I already said. So it looks very nice, very much like the comic book appearances of Batman in the 70s through the 90s. My only complaint is I like the Kenner capes a little bit more. I like the fact that with some teasing and manipulation, you could actually wrap the cape somewhat around Batman. And it would have been nice if they actually extended the cape all the way around, like so. And you could have that, you know, hidden in the darkness type of look, you know, disguising himself. And then be able to flip it over. But I guess I would really just put this uh, little sculpt here to waste I guess so in a way it's not something that's going to detract too much from my score it's just a little nitpick uh, beggars really can't be choosers it's a magnificent figure overall and I'm just going to shut up about it obviously they did reuse the sculpt I believe they used this sculpt for all of their Batman figures up until about 2005-2006 whenever they changed the body style he does have some very nice, appropriate character accessories. He has a Batarang, which I would assume to be a little collapsible. It's very nice detail if the camera can focus on it. Here we go. Almost like a boomerang. Eh, that's what a Batarang is, Dillweed. 
And he's got some nice cuffs, which I kind of find useless. It's nice that he has it. It's basic arsenal. But since you really can't put him around a figure's, you know, wrists, it's kind of useless to me. And by far my favorite accessory is his grapnel launcher. It's got eat. It's got four points. Each of them is supposed to represent one of the darts attached to the uh, zip line that he would have. This would be the chamber. This would be a reel for each of the lines. And of course, you have your triggers here and here. Very nice. I love this accessory. Definitely, he he would have used this in the early two thousands. I think this is the Jim Lee version, if I'm not mistaken. But I do know he used this in the early 2000s. And the beauty part of it is, remember how some action figures had that really, really frustrating wrists where you can't really get anything to fit in it and you would feel like you were about to break the fingers off of the actual figure? Well, not here. Here, his wrists, the whole forearm is actually made of a very, very soft plastic, probably rubber. So, everything just slips in very easily. Uh, take three looks better to me now. Be there we go. There we go. I was about to say, because uh, take three, I was able to put this in here with no problem. Maybe it's just because I'm getting tired. And, of course, you could do that very nice little, uh... You know, mm, kind of art limited articulation, but there we go. Now it looks like he's about ready to shoot his grapnel and take off for parts unknown. And, of course, the same can be said for the other hand. And he can hold his batarang very nicely. So now let's take the... There we go. Now it looks like he's about ready to throw his batarang. And, well... Well, face it, there's no, there, there's no cool way. He can hold on to the cuffs, but there's just no way for him to really hold on to the cuffs. But I found a nice little spot for him. You can stick it right up in there in that elbow joint, in that uh, waist joint. And now he can hold on to each of his accessories. And look super cool doing it. One more thing I forgot to mention is even his feet. He's got these very nice combat type boots, excellent for scaling walls and rooftops, and they have some very nice heavy treads and the bat signal because we all know how obsessive everyone is with putting bat signals on everything. It's kind of like his signature. And uh, that's it. That's all I have to say for this figure. I am done with this review. Um, so my final thoughts on this. I paid 30 bucks for this plus $10 shipping and handling for uh, Priority Mail. And I am not dissatisfied in any way about this purchase. This is the best Batman purchase that I have made in quite a while. Um, this is a figure that I've wanted for so long, ever since I first saw the pictures of it on Toy News, in, was it Toy News International? TNewsI.com. And I just remember feeling so frustrated because it was only going to be available at a comic convention that I had no way of going to. So to find, 10 years later, well almost 10 years later, when I was able to, just on a whim, I just searched Mattel San, uh, San Diego Comic-Con Batman. And when I saw this for a buy-it-now price of $29.99, I just swooped on it. I knew if I didn't, someone was going to. And like I said, I'm not disappointed. I really felt that given the money 
It's in a very nice box, a very, very nice character appropriate accessories, the classic Neil Adams look. Uh, so much that went into this sculpt, I mean the rubber hands that make it easy for him to hold his accessories. And it's got so much elasticity in the hands that I don't really have to worry about the rubber wearing out. Because if they haven't worn out by now, I don't think they're going to. But that could be just wishful thinking on my part. Yeah, there's a couple of things I don't like about it. I really wish that they put the, you know, the black forehead in addition to the shadowing that they did. And I wish that the cape kind of was more flowing like the, a Batman cape should be. But that's probably because I grew up with Kenner toys, so uh, can you blame me? And I really felt that the belt itself... Although I love the classic belt, um, I really felt that the yellow doesn't match the symbol. I really felt the yellow should have matched the symbol for one, but that's just a minor nitpick. And the other thing is this belt itself doesn't have really any defining... It's just like a little flat you know, yellow belt. I really think that they should have added a little bit of shadowing in between each of the uh, of the capsules. You know, just to stand it up. Just stand out just a little bit. But other than that, it is a fantastic figure. I wouldn't pay anything more than $100 because that's the only ones that I'm seeing right now. If you can find it for cheaper and you have the opportunity to buy it, I would suggest you go ahead. If you can find one loose, go ahead. Make sure it has all the accessories, though. Go ahead and buy it. You will not be disappointed. And the best thing about it is if you choose to leave it in the box, you can do so because it is completely collector friendly. Oh, and before I go, as the light is starting to shine over, I noticed that there are actually bats. It isn't just a flat black box. There's actually little bats all around this box, at least the front box, part of the box. I find that's actually pretty interesting. So it's not just like a little glossy flat box. It's got a little bit of character in itself. So that's another re reason why it's worth $30 in my opinion. For those of you who uh, have waited really long for this review, consider it a treat. For those of you who uh, have never seen this figure in person, well, you, this is, I guess, the closest thing that you will get to see of this for those of you who don't, will never have a chance to own this. Remember, only 3,000 of these were made. And uh, if I was to do ratings, I would do a 3.75 out of 5. A top 10, easily a 9 out of 10. Why 3.75 out of 5 and a 9 out of 10? Well, it's my scale. That's just how I would do it. Mostly because of the articulation and uh, the some minor nitpicks. If I was to do a top 5 scale for a top 10 scale. You know what? I'm, I'm not getting into it. It's a, fan, a fantastic figure. So far, it's my favorite Mattel Batman figure that I have ever owned and will continue to own. Um... And really, that's it. That's all I have to say. I'm going to get out of here before I go over and just start really continuing on the rant. Because really, that's why... It, it's. I guess it's a signature that I rant, but... Some people are kind of annoyed at it, I guess. But anyway, like I said, this is a fantastic figure. I can't say it enough. If you have the chance to buy it, please buy it. This is Transato 1-0, signing off.